In the late 1990s, the name Bobby Diamonds was everywhere when it came to poker. And then in 2003, after this television appearance, he disappeared, went underground. Bobby Diamonds has been one cool customer all day. Here he is looking to lock up this tournament. As you see, he's 94.5% with his pocket aces to do it. My first television appearance at the 5K Winner Take All Dilly Texas Invitational. Down again. Yep, still pocket aces. All right, we're going to go to the river. Oh, that's a disaster card for Bobby Diamonds. His opponents has made trip kings on the river. As you see, 0%. He's drawing completely dead right now. Bobby's opponent has moved all in. It's decision time for Bobby Diamonds. It's his tournament life is on the line. He makes the call. He's not going to like this. There it is. You can see it all over his face. He's just lost the tournament. He lost over a million dollars that day. He hadn't been seen in almost 20 years. Bobby Diamonds resurfaced earlier this year at a poker charity event in Cut and Shoot, Texas. In obscurity, Bobby's legend only grew as he became known as one of the winningest underground poker players of all time. He agreed to appear in this documentary. On Bobby's cattle ranch in South Texas, the filmmakers were given one week unfettered access prior to his reemergence in the poker world. I slept for six hours after 60 hours of non-stop poker. Six hours of poker dreams replaying hand after hand after hand. I just got home, but all I want to do is get right back into the action. Brunson that said poker is war people only pretend it's a game and uh, that's what I do when I'm out here running I visualize uh, well, what was that movie chariots of fire so when I'm out here running that's what I visualize I visualize chariots on fire yeah I'm just messing with you that's not how my week begins the last time I ran was 12 years ago when a card game in Abilene got stuck up and I was running for my 12 gauge That's a good first lesson for poker. Never believe what anybody tells you. This is how my week begins with copious amounts of coffee. This isn't common poker knowledge, but it was my great grandfather Claude that came up with the phrase, I'm all in. Prior to that, people used to say, here's everything in front of me, or I put you all in. But my grandfather's the first one to say, I'm all in, which was such a declarative statement at the time that for the first year that he was saying, I'm all in, he actually never had to show his cards at showdown because everybody believed that he had the goods. Who am I? That is a good question. I guarantee you've never heard of me. Which is kind of funny that Brutal Poodle decided to do a documentary on me. Anyway, my name's Bobby Diamonds. I've been playing underground poker for over 23 years. 1999 in Toronto is when I really started playing poker all the time. I was a bartender in this West Side bar in Toronto. And the owners had a weekly Saturday night game, needed somebody to sit in one night, so they taught me Texas Hold'em really quickly. I did really well that night and started grifting all over Toronto looking for games anywhere I could find them. I got caught up in the lifestyle of poker, surrounded by clowns. I started leading a life of excess. I was wandering around the film world, pretty rudderless. I uh, met a girl. We started dating. We got married. She's the love of my life. Her name's Sarah. We moved to Texas. Among other things, I became a behind-the-scenes power player in D.C. No matter how much that turned out, the rush was just never enough for me, and it was always poker that kept calling me back.
This is my guy, Pan. It's short for Pandemic and Peter Pan. At the height of the pandemic, he was showing up at our house in San Antonio. He was coming and going. And then we wanted to be his decision as well as ours. And the third time he came back and he was looking very ill and we took him in and we got him to the vet and got him a clean bill of health. I joked that uh, we didn't adopt him, he adopted us. Now the three of us are family. All the endorsements and television appearances took me away from the game. Ultimately, it was all those distractions that led me to lose that day in Dilly, Texas. After that loss, I reassessed. I decided to leave public life and focus only on my family and continue my passion for the game. Poker players spend an inordinate amount of time within their own minds. I've got to refresh and look at the world in a much different manner. Bobby, follow me. Ambrose Beer said in the Devil's Dictionary, poker was a noun. A game said to be played with cards for some purpose to this lexicographer I know. A lady walked about with diamonds. Look you what I have. Love's labor lost. Act 5, scene 1. Deep well, third, I bet. Bluffing. What am I supposed to do? Raise. Maybe I'll talk to Aces and find the piece of blood's hand. I can't wait to go raise. Red 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 snakes Red represent Red a creative Red life Red force. Shit snakes, their skins, their symbols of rebirth, transformation, immortality, healing. The answer's buried your soul. Cold. I've lost an entire day, so today's all about recentering myself. Why have I decided to return to public events? That's a great question. When I was younger, I was always chasing the accolades of others. Now that I've gotten older, I want to see if I can exist on the world stage on my own terms. Must give and hazard all he hath. So I'll be here for Monday. Sounds good. I'll let you know. I'll call you when I check in. Good. Call me from before. Okay, love you. <laughs> I love you too. Jesse May spoke of poker in terms of skill and luck, and it was the luck he had to master. He's 100% correct. As a poker player, I've had my share of ups and downs. As I reflect on my life in this moment, in a million years, I cannot explain how lucky I've gotten. I'm Bobby Diamonds, and as my great-grandfather always said, I'm all in. Back in 1999, it was my mom that got me the job in the bar in Toronto where I learned how to play Texas Hold'em. We're good, thanks, thank you, thank you. Yeah, no, it was a really cool experience, except for that part where you were filming me when I was sleeping, that was pretty fucking weird.